Today we're filming in a new place. Well, it's the same place, different angle. But I usually film my videos facing this way. Today we're facing this way. I don't know why I felt the need to tell you that. Today, I'm talking about something that is so important. This might be one of the most important topics that I talk about just because I'm talking about salvation, which is extremely important. If you're a Christian, you have a tenderness for the people that aren't saved and you, you know, you want them to be saved. In Matthew, Jesus says he wants everybody to come to the knowledge of him and be saved. He wants none to perish. Though some will and some will choose the path of destruction, that's not what he wants. He doesn't point at somebody and say, oh, I don't like them. They make me mad. I'm just going to, you know, they don't get to go to heaven. That's not how it works. He wants everybody to come to the knowledge of the truth, which is his truth. And he wants everybody to be saved and come to the knowledge of that. But unfortunately, many people aren't. Oh my goodness, I haven't been in focus this whole time. It's fine. We got it. It's fine. So, thank you so much for clicking on this video. And let's get on to this topic. <laughs> so, for the past year, two years, I've hopped around a lot to different youth groups, tried out a bunch. And I've just experienced the youth group culture, I guess. I have just found that the common denominator is youth groups are just social events. Most of the time, not all, but most of the time, it will point back to us. The lesson will point back to us and how can we better ourselves, and how can we do more self-care? How can we prioritize ourselves instead of looking at, okay, what? Wow. <laughs> Look what God has done for us. Look at how amazing he is, that he's enough. He was the ransom that we needed. He's the one we need to be focusing our time and energy on. We need to be reading his word and absorbing his word and what he has done for us in our lives other than just trying to figure out what Bible story we relate to the most. Though those are good things too, and it's good to make friends, it's good to have community. We are called to community as Christians, but it's not the only thing that we need to be focused on in youth groups, and I think that that's kind of what we've come to <laughs> in this generation. My mom, she was the youth group leader in college, and so she was uh, an event planner too, so she just saw that the focus that needed to be on Jesus was placed in other areas that weren't as important. I've experienced a lot in youth groups that nine times out of 10, I'd say, the youth group leader or pastor will cherry pick something. You know, they'll just read a verse and then they'll talk about a life experience or they'll talk about a story that they had or something, which the reason I have a problem with that is because we're not going into what the passage is talking about in context of the passage. We're talking about something that happened to us in our life. And I think that that's one of the ways that we have taken the focus off of Jesus and off of the amazing things he has done and you know that we find in the Bible and placing it on us and making all of the worth of the story and all the worth of the passage and placing it on us, placing the crown that is supposed to be on Jesus because of what he has done and putting it on us, making it look like we're the ones that are so awesome. <laughs> One of my favorite sayings is never read a Bible verse. And a lot of people are like, wait, what? So why can I read a Bible verse? And it's not like, don't ever read a Bible verse. I have many Bible verses all over my bedroom wall. I have verses that I write all the time. But the point of this saying is read everything in context. Make sure that when you read a Bible verse or when you're reading a passage or when you're reading something in the Bible, you're always giving it the recognition in the context that it deserves and that you're reading it with the heart of wanting to know what God's word says and what his truth is and not conform it to what we want it to say, which I think that we have done a lot. Something that a lot of pastors and youth group leaders are not talking about is that 80% of the kids that grow up in Christian homes walk away from Christianity and they walk away from the truth of Jesus. This is something that just kills me on the inside. Just the fact that most people that grow up in loving, caring, devout Christian homes that will go to church and do potluck and be in a Christian community and have Christian friends, 80% of them walk away. This is a problem that we need to address because not enough people are addressing it. And I think the reason why is because most youth group leaders and pastors underestimate 
what the students can learn and what the students are able to understand and comprehend. And so they dumb it down to make it sound boring when really we are able to take a lot. We're able to understand and be interested in topics that a lot of youth group pastors don't mention because they think we lack the interest and in knowledge. And a lot of people might come at me for saying that, but it's true. We need to get kids excited about things. We need to get kids interested in God's word and know the entirety of it and the stories that are just amazing and that put Jesus in the most amazing light and make the Bible the most interesting book in the world that we can't get enough of. But that's not happening. What we're doing is we're taking a verse and then we're taking it out of context and talking about a life story that we had in our past. And that's why 80% are walking away. They don't understand why we would even want to believe it. If I am your youth group leader and I am setting a scene for something that happened in my life and week after week after week, that's all I'm ever talking about. I'm taking a verse and taking it out of context to talk about something that happened in my life you are likely to later think that it is all a story and it is not real and the Bible isn't real because I always applied it to something that happened to me and I never talked about the truth that it holds within itself and why the truth is true for everybody and not just me applying it to something that I had experienced because you haven't experienced the same things that I've experienced. So again, if I'm always referencing to that and always talking about a story, then it's not gonna do you any good. But I think we need to leave stories for another time. Not always make the Bible about us because it's not. The Bible is meant to point back to Jesus and in youth groups, we're not doing that. We have built this narcissistic, is that a word? Narcissistic. Youth groups are just youth pastors training up narcissists most of the time. And again, that's something I'm going to get hate for, but it's true. And somebody needs to say this because nobody's saying this. Nobody's saying that, you know, when people talk about these things and apply it to our life, it's not fun. Sure, stories can be great, but later it's all going to seem like fiction if we don't put it in its rightful place, which is truth. I don't mean to sound angry and I don't mean to sound condescending to anybody. I really just say this with an overflow of love and a desire for people to know God's word and be interested in it and to want to go deeper into what the Lord has done and to understand it. So I hope that when I speak all these things and when I say these things that you see my heart in this and that you understand where I'm coming from. Just wanted to get that out of the way. I am going to read some Bible verses that talk about discipleship for young people and that also talk about what we should be doing um, as youth group leaders and what we should be doing as pastors, mentoring kids and discipling kids because we are called to disciple. The Lord said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that God has commanded us and know that he is with us to the end of our days. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. And I also want to list off a couple other verses that are very fitting for this conversation and for this topic. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way they should go and when they're old, they won't turn from it. We need to be teaching kids the word and not just referencing always to our own personal life stories, which can be helpful, of course, but it's more important to talk about the Bible and talk about what that says at a youth group or Bible study. And Bible studies nowadays are actually <laughs> like self-studies. You just have your big, long story, put a Bible verse in it, and that's what you study. You study your story, not actually what the word says. First Timothy 4.12 says, don't let anyone look down on you for your age, but set an example in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. And I wanted to mention this because a lot of, again, a lot of youth pastors are looking down on kids and don't share heavy things in the Bible that are crucial to share because they think that kids lack the excitement and ability to understand heavy things in the Bible that are crucial to talk about. So at the end of the day, when we only water it down for kids, kids, they end up with this story that they think is fictional. They end up not having a strong foundation that they can lay their life on. They don't think that what you're teaching them is re a reliable source because you keep bringing it back to yourself in something that they haven't experienced and they haven't even seen to be true. And it's just a lose-lose at the end of the day. And we can see that in the statistics. 80% of kids that are growing up in the Christian church are walking away. And that is heartbreaking. And that just gives me such a heart to disciple people and to share the truth. And so I hope that you you know, can see that whenever I am sharing these things, it comes from a place of, 
I am so excited and eager to share God's word and to share the truth, just how amazing God is and his word is and how it is authoritative, it is an errand, and it is so crucial to read if you're a Christian. And even if you're not a Christian, I think that it is such an important book to read. It teaches you history and it is truth. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have experienced something similar to this. If you wanna leave me a comment, uh, feel free to do that with your youth group experience and anything that you would like to share. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to see your comment. I always heart and respond to all, all comments. So if you wanna leave me one, I would love that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.